All right, guys. Good morning. All right. I want to show us how I limbed this design. This was a design I sent for embroidering, and the person that made the embroidering spoiled the work. Now, uh, this is how it should be. This opening should have been opened smoothly. But look at what I have here. The opening is so rough that I couldn't submit it to the owner of the clothes. So I'm trying to create another design out of it. Now I cut out the down part. I used it to form the flap of the outfit. Now I try my best to make sure that I brought I brought out the sleeves, ironed properly. Now um, the body of the cloth as well. I found um, the pockets. I cut out the pocket from the pieces of the down part. You know that was meant to be added the hem part of the outfit and then I cut it out for the pocket design and the flap design now I have already used a cloth gum or your interfacing to slit the center um, bodies of my senator and then I have folded my flap accordingly and I have added I have gummed then I'm trying to stitch the flap so the essence of showing you this video is to encourage us not to give up when we are having difficulties or challenges in making a particular design we can actually turn it to be something better right so if you are facing such challenges or if you have faced or in case you face please there is no time to get angry the time you use to get angry try to make use of it to create another design out of the problem right so this is just going to be a kind of a motivation to most of us out there who thinks that um, designer don't face challenges or that um, they sew with precision yes they do but most times they still encounter challenges that might have ruined their day but your um, ability to stay calm in such challenges makes you a winner right so now when you must have seen the video um, trying to fill the flap now um, also don't forget that we are starting our classes for the new year 2022 i have the class of three months six months and one year uh, of different prizes now um, i have the class of um, um, six months um, to be to be um, 50k the class of one year to be 60k the class of uh, three months to be 30k now all these prizes are fixed now i'm doing this so that to enable us have more time to practice but then, um, if you feel it's too expensive, there's no problem, you can still hold on whenever I float up or uh, float a new um, duration classes, two weeks or one month classes, which might be cheaper. But don't forget that in our tailoring business, we need more time to practice, and that time is what you are paying for, right? So now I'm trying to slit the underneath the flap so that um, the folding at the hem part will not be that bulky. Or who's right so I'm folding the down make sure you fold to your desired shape it can be V or a rectangle however you want to do it is solely your choice then you stitch properly you stitch the point that um, your, your stitching will be tip to tip you stitch in a V shape form and then when you are almost done with this you are also going to um, um, Fix your pockets and then proceed to the next stage of the outfit coupling, right? So now take a time to do this. Don't be in a haste to finish up, right? Take a time to do this always. That's the secret to the successful sewing of all top designers. They take the time to make the outfit, but most of us are always in a haste to finish to see the art and, and, and results of the art piece, right? Then you stitch and make sure you stop at the point of your slit opening. You can measure to be 6 inches or 7 as the case may be, right? Then, um, we all know that um, online classes uh, so um, interesting when you meet a good tutor and the cost of the video productions are getting 
higher as the, as the day goes, you know, buying fabrics, trying to create designs, data, um, uploading, all right, that's, the, that's my pocket. I'm placing it at one and a half inch away from the flap, or from the edge of the flap, and then um, the position from the height or shoulder will be if you push out two inches, you put the pocket at the end of nine inches, nine point five or ten, as the case may be, depending on your customer's chest measurement. So for my customer, I have a chest of fifty-two, so I'm using point ten for him because he's huge and tall right so that is a guideline for you to know this is so now i'm trying to stitch the pocket so you take the time to stitch all through the pocket and then make sure your stitches are neat come up with tip to tip right tip to tip helps you to give you a nice and perfect finishing is very important then after the pocket now I'm not going to continue with my regular sewing and then um, I hope you just watch this video to the end and see if you have anything to learn and then in as much as I might not explain all true but then the visuals can help you to draw some inspirations and some knowledge right so I'm done fixing the pocket so let's look at how the outcome came out. Now this is the outcome. Look at it, right? It's very fine. You see how beautiful it is, right? Very beautiful already. So you resume or you continue with the regular coupling. That's the back piece. Then um, I have an inner inner facing where the gum is. Then I also gummed it. Now this doesn't this facing um, and it doesn't have a back facing. But it has an inner back facing, so that is why the gumming was done double way at the wrong side of the back and as well at the wrong side of the inner facing to make sure that the gums are concealed in between the both facings. Then I'm putting the label now on the facing because there is no real back facing. This is the inner back facing, so you first and foremost stitch your label at the inner facing before attaching it to the real back body or bodies right so that is how it should be so you can still stay tuned watch the video to the end so that you'll get to learn some secrets in sewing something similar right all right happy watching
the old songs.
Don't.